Welcome to Rent a Friend Radio, where we use logic and reason in every season to maintain compliance with wisdom and science. I am your friend at a very reasonable hourly rate, Rent a Friend 2000, the man with a plan to bring the facts on stacks of wax, showering the nation with science education. And today we are answering your listener mail. Nathaniel Thomas writes, The Big Bang Theory and the macroevolutionary theories do not explain the natural. They assume the supernatural doesn't exist, and they have no answers for consciousness or the conscience, the inner man, or morality. Anyone who believes that the universe and everything in it came into existence on its own or by accident or by chance or by unintelligence is lying to themselves. Well, said Nathaniel, this is something a lot of people have trouble grasping. They just assume that the Big Bang, Deep Time, and evolutionary models are things discovered by science as opposed to models imposed on science. I used to be one of those people until I took a look into it. Here's a longtime listener who falls into the has trouble grasping camp. His name looks like a misspelling of robot, and he says, Studies in paleontology, geology, radiation, cosmology, and genetics have all yielded results that overwhelmingly support a model of the Earth's history in which life first appeared on this planet as a single-celled organism over 3.5 billion years ago and gradually became more and more diverse since that time to this. My dear misspelled robot, you clearly haven't listened to anything said by creationists or any actual scientists in the field. Yes, this is the story told to you by PBS Kids and the as seen on TV scientists like Bill Nye, who started as a stand up comedian and kid show host, but this is not the story told by scientists. Let's take the fields you list here Paleontology, the study of fossils. What do the fossils show? Let's hear it from famed evolutionist Stephen Jay Gould. The history of most fossil species includes features particularly inconsistent with gradualism. One, stasis. Most species exhibit no directional change during their tenure on Earth. They appear in the fossil record looking much the same as when they disappear. Morphological change is usually limited and directionless. 2. Sudden appearance. In any local area, a species does not arise gradually by the steady transformation of its ancestors. It appears all at once and fully formed. That's Stephen Jay Gold from his book, The Panda's Thumb. So the fossil shows stasis, things not evolving, and sudden appearance, things first appearing with no evolutionary ancestor. If you can look at that data and say it overwhelmingly supports the deep time evolutionary model, you may need to get your prescription changed. Geology. Well, the fossils are found in the rocks, so Stephen's quote about the fossils tells us all we need to know. But let's consider a quote from the other side of the aisle. Ken Ham asks the question, if there really was a global flood, like Genesis says, what would we expect to find? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. And when we look at the earth, what do we find? Billions of dead things, buried in rock layers, laid down by water, all over the Earth. Geology also shows that the deep time assumptions are pure assertion. We are told the Grand Canyon took millions and millions of years to form. Hundreds of millions of years! But then, a very large canyon with thousands of rock layers formed in the Northwest United States in 1981 in less than three days. Three days! Three days! And bent rock layers show sudden accumulation and reshaping before the rock could harden. Yeah, the list goes on and on. But the facts fit Genesis and fail evolution. Radiation? I'm guessing he's referring to radio dating methods? Well, radio dating shows that a rock less than 30 years old will be dated to be millions of years old. And so we have no reason to trust those deep time dates. The whole system is based on unprovable assumptions, all of which have been proven to be false assumptions. Also, carbon dating has proven that dinosaurs, diamonds, and coal cannot be millions of years old. So, radiation isn't helping your case any, misspelled robot. Cosmology. Anyone out there see the Big Bang happen? No? So we're just gonna assume that then, huh? Go check out the Confessions of a Young Earth Creationist series and read the chapters on the Big Bang. Big fail. Genetics. Genetics. This one amazes me. Genetics has shown more and more that every living cell on Earth has a system of information, specified complexity, and molecular machines which is so complex and well-designed that literally nothing ever made by man can rival it. Yet, somehow, people think it shows that life came together by accident? Let me give you an analogy. You're walking along the beach one day and you find a rectangular box. Hmm, could that have formed by natural means? Not likely, as erosion and other natural processes tend to make things less geometric. But I guess if the conditions were just right... Wait! This isn't a box, it's a book! Could 400 pages be formed naturally and bind themselves in a rectangular box formation? Well, paper is made of trees, and trees are totally natural, so I guess... Wait! There is writing on these pages! All of these marks might mean something, but maybe the ink just spilled onto the pages and formed a series of organized shapes and lines? But wait again! These writings are words! They are all part of a particular coding system, and this book is actually the instructions for how to make and use a printing press. Surely that is proof that this object has an intelligent designer. Well, but printing presses are made of wood, which again comes from trees, and since the book is being reproduced, then each successive copy might have a slight error in it, which could account for all of the information in the book? 
Do you see how willingly blind you have to be to look at genetics and think it supports evolution? You have to be certifiably kooky dukes! Observational science has shown us that there are worms and there are fish, but only the evolutionary religion has the imagination and gall it takes to say, therefore fish are the great-great-grandchildren of worms. To take that leap doesn't involve science. It takes a great deal of faith and magic. And I don't think I'm straining credulity to say that the evidence does not overwhelmingly support the influence of magic on the natural world. This is your Rent-A-Friend saying thanks for listening to Rent-A-Friend Radio. Don't wait for fate, there's no debate. I'm your friend at a very reasonable hourly rate. You dudes and dearies, send me your queries and I'll holler back Jack with answers and facts. I'll see you again, I hate this to end, but thanks for letting me be your Rent-A-Friend.